You're going Ehome no matter what? Yeah, I I think XM on this Razor is uh, not only a good pick, but a comfort pick for him. Mm -hmm. I think Mars is a comfort pick for Chalice. Yep. Um, and I think, honestly, Lion's a comfort pick for X-Nova. The other two could be, uh, you know, Spectre for Siler. I don't expect it to be something he's uncomfortable with. I don't think that hero is really, if you're a carry at this level in the game, should be an uncomfortable hero. So I think every carry should be comfortable with Spectre for the most part. Yep, I But agree. Um, I, I think, it, it, other than Dark Will, but I've seen Fade play this hero as well. Like, I, I think Ehome just have a comfortable draft. Whereas Aster Ares, something I alluded to, and I don't know if you agree, is if both the Luna and the TA get backed up into the jungle in some sort of fashion, you're splitting farm on heroes that both like to take the jungle. And that yeah. could be dangerous. That's the same reason why I said I don't like TA and TB. TA and Luna do the same thing, right? They want to farm the triangle. And you don't want to farm the triangle together because it's very inefficient. And there's just not enough resources to really enable both of the heroes. Mm -hmm. Which is always a little scary. Spectre, he has Urn of Shadows queued up right now. Alright. I'm not against it. It's a pretty old school thing to do. But is it better than just investing into a straight blade mail? Right. Probably not. So, now the follow up question because we talked about Axe always getting chipped vest. Does Silar on Spectre get chip vest automatically? Mm, yes. Unless Gaben wants to force a game three. In which case, he will not get it. Oh my god. X Nova oh. taking a lot of damage. This Acorn shot is ridiculous, level one. Did you get a double bounce? You're taking. Ton of damage. How much is that? There's 50 plus 50, so it's 150 damage just from the acorn shots, which slow you. And then there's right clicks on top of that. I think he also ate a tide bringer. I just went from full health to like 50. A little bit spooky. That's the one thing. Yeah, that's the one thing that scares me for X Nova, is uh, can he withstand if his positioning isn't almost perfect? Uh, you know the tide bringers. Yeah, level one Tidebringer is pretty easy to dodge, but once he's level three and onwards, it's going to be very difficult. And we're going to look at XM in the mid lane here as well. There's a lot of creeps under the tower, but they're not in a good position for him to last hit. Yeah. He's actually doing very well in those first couple of waves. 6 CS compared to Razor's 5. Three denies though on XM. We'll see how he performs in this lane. Again, I, I expect, especially with how much harassment X Nova is taking in the top lane, you know X Nova to maybe rotate in. Yeah, that's At a very powerful kill combo. Him. Yeah, even Dark Willow too. That means Cat has to be a little bit careful. Clockwork dropping down very low. Still has a healing self though. No mana to work with, however. Maybe he would want to just reset at home. Ooh, XM Ooh. losing his courier with the bottle. That got cleave from full health, so he doesn't have a bottle now. That feels real bad. So now Phoenix with a bottle. He's gonna soak up these water runes, and XM will see how he's able to sustain at least while he doesn't have this bottle to work with. They're going to be a little more challenging now. Because Tia with the Refraction Shards can actually last it decently well. Sitting about 110 damage, plus a Quelling Blade. Yeah. How is bot lane looking? Ooh. Luna getting pressure quite a bit. Like, it's a very strong yeah, duo only 11 lane. Mars below. Yeah. And as you said, Chalice on Mars very comfortable so that's my question uh, we were going to talk about how comfortable mars is but we'll hold up for a second as x nova goes down to yuna and well. x nova was getting harassed pretty heavily in that lane so is sour those time bringers really doing quite a bit yeah. 
Offlane Kanka is a beast. Like that hero is very hard to stop if you don't have the right heroes. Like an Ursa or so. Chalice. Get the kill on a Chalice. The Siamese Cat runs at him. Fade trying to get one in return. Now goes into the Shadow Realm to meet Yugi's grandfather and will get the kill. So only stuck there for a moment. Maximilian Pegasus can't keep Dark Will there forever. Yeah. Who is that to Kaiba in this equation? <laughs> Who's the Kaiba in this situation? Yeah. Um. XM maybe? Razor? <laughs> Alright, I'll take it. So going back to the whole thing with Chalice and how proficient he is on Mars. Mm -hmm. If you spear into the brambles and use that God's rebuke, does he stand there still after that spear hits the tree? Uh, what do you mean exactly? So you know how you could do the spear God's rebuke and it stops them from going with the spear into the tree? Yeah, yeah. So, if, if you, without the God's Rebuke, and if you just hit the Brambles, do you still go, or is that something that will also stop your movement as well? Oh, you still go, you still go. Which is also good, though, because if you start on a Bramble, because he hits you with a Bramble, you can spear him into another Bramble, and potentially God's Rebuke him into another Bramble. Which is why this combo is so potent. How much is a triple Bramble? That would be 480 damage. And maybe see it here? Oh, I just missed this barely. It was close. Uh, the cogs put him in a good spot to just walk away, but had he walked into a bramble, potentially could have just been his life. Yeah, I mean it's just a little mini game against Dark Willow every time, right? Raiders level six, has to be careful here. Yes. Nothing oh, too fine. crazy on Silar XM level six now, which yeah, could be in pressure onto the tower mid. Uh, potentially, it's just Razor doesn't really deal a whole lot of tower damage, unfortunately. And now Tia is also level 6, so the traps are going to make life a little more problematic. You can see Phoenix already kind of thinking about, hey, can I back up into the jungle? But at the same time, Luna's not exactly having the best lane. But that being yeah. said, staying even with the Spectre, we'll see what Uwu wants to do. And there's a catapult here too. So you do want to destroy the catapult first if you can. And just... Try to get that out of the way. Rune top, invisibility. Maybe he's even looking to gank Does top, he go top? One. Nice bushwhack. Catching out both support heroes, and now they should know they have a ward there. Question is, do they stay? Because they've got the invis, and you gotta expect that they think that XM's out of the lane. Yuna coming over. They want Kunkka. He's the one they want to go after. They've got the static link. The pushback comes through onto the lion. They might be able to trade. They will. It's at least a one for one, but they've got the curse crown that lands onto Yuna. Scurrying away and ooh, maybe making an escape. Shadow Realm, but you can't keep up with the fast hoodwing. Yeah, the movement speed bonus 20% with double charges as well. A little bit too much to keep up with. But a good rotation from X and we've seen it a lot of times. Like his razor rotations are always spot on. And alleviating quite a bit of pressure from the Spectre. Who also picked up the urn just before that, so two charges to his name. Spear. Siamese cat onto his own cogs. There's Haunt available now. They wanna set up for a kill on the side lanes. And Ulu is going heavy into the beams. Usually we see two levels max on the beams and just prioritize the scaling. Mm -hmm. But he's potentially looking for a turnaround with an early eclipse. They're setting up bottom. They want to use Haunt. Yeah, both supports here again. Mm -hmm. Will they get a chance to though? There's no reason. I arena. think they saw them come through on the ward though. Yeah. The warding has been pretty damn good. From... Asta, even in game one, especially while they were catching winning. now. Ex Nova, Earth Spike immediately. Lucent Beam was already used. They've got the Hex as well as the Brambles coming down. They'll go to the Haunt Towers, trying to make a rotation. They've got the Spear that lands onto Siamese Cat. They'll get the kill out of the Clockwork, and now Fade body blocking Uwu really well goes into the Eclipse, and he just walks away. XM meanwhile though dead to Phoenix as they make a rotation. I believe. 
with the help of that hoodwink that catches XM off guard. Yeah. He got caught out by two fully charged TA traps as well. And of course, that massive slow on the damage over time is very, very hard for Razor to deal with. Which is why we said in the draft that it's actually not a super hard counter in the lane as much as it was before. TA yeah, receives a lot of buffs since then, and it's a big ancient stack. Yuna is just coming over. So, hey, give me my level 6, bro. Ooh, ooh, again, getting pressured. Who's in beam on XM? They've got the Earth Spike. Here comes the Kanka, but he's immediately hexed. They've got the Arena, the Spear lands on the side. He's got, this might not be one, but three. Ghost Ship, Touring, all landing on a Sylar. He might be in some trouble. They've got themselves the cogs, but it won't be enough with the battery assault, and they missed the bush. They get the kill now onto the Kanka. Sharpshooter hits the line. The Earth Spike is there. Not one, not two, not three, but four kills here for Ehom. Wow. That is great movements coming in from Ehome, an aggression that we did not see early on in the first game. Yeah, which do you think maybe uh, definitely like Luna being caught out there baited them in one by one? But do you think Luna is only there because TA is farming the triangle? Because I feel like Luna... That's the thing. Yeah. Luna wanted does, to be there, does I feel it also... like. Does it also put Luna into a different build? This Lucent Beam, Lunar Blessing, not taking any Moonglaves to farm at all in the jungle, say? Like, is this just the standard build or is it like deviated off the standard a little bit? Yeah, it doesn't usually go heavy into the aura as well as Moonglaves just to be able to sort of farm up in the triangle. But I mean, TA at least is very rich. But can TA solo carry against a lineup like this? It's going to be tough. Luna is suffering quite a bit. Like, you never want to be behind a Nebworth when you're playing against a Spectre as a Luna. He's going Radiance on Spectre. Wow. Sida hmm. taking out all the old builds from <laughs> five years ago. Earn into Radiance is such an old school. It still works. I'll prove it to those kids. Yeah. The Boomer mentality. Trying to get through to those zoomers. Setting up on Siler. Bushwhack sharpshooter. There's the break with the spirit vessel and the Goodbye. ghost ship. Silar is dead. That's I'm kind of hoping me, he's going away from this the item kids. build. After that death? Yeah, I think just going to the Manta. Like literally every other player on the planet. There's a reason why Manta is so good. It gives you Roshan, gives you good you fighting ability early on. And more important, and most important, it gives you armor as well. A lot of armor against the TA. And once TA has Deso, you're gonna get shredded as the Spectre. Hmm. We'll see if he keeps the build after the pause. It's a 2k lead for Aster Ares. This is a little bit of the same of what we talked about. Laning phases for these teams that don't have the experience have been solid. The question becomes after, is it, you know, enough for them to hold on to? Can they sustain? Do they have the experience? Yeah, it's gonna be, well, Luna is in trouble here. Terrorize trying to land it. Now looking at the Terrorize as the hook shot comes in. They land the Brimbles out onto the Luna. Ooh, now on the run, but the damage coming up from XM is certainly felt. He has a clip. Bedlam Eclipse and the damage right on the XM. Yuna gets the kill with the Bushwhack. But they're going to haunt. They want this. They'll look for the Terrorize, but he can't get it off. Acorn shot, Shadow Realm. Maven not need the Terrorize as he lands the shot onto Ulu and gets the kill onto the Luna. Now they've got the Arena as well as the Earth Spike. Then the Finger, get the kill on Yuna. The and now the TA, who's the one that really doesn't want to die. Top of the net worth, but it's looking likely. Curse Crown runs back into his doom. He'll end up dead. They've got the Tidebringer kill on a fade, but now it has fallen out of control because this might be a full team wipe here for Ehome towards Aster Ares, but they back off. They pull the ejection cord. Chalice on the run through the trees with the spirit vessel on him. Can he find a place to TP out? God's rebuke? No, he can't. And it's Kunkka who gets another, this time on Chalice. He's got himself a killing spree. Yeah, it was a very big kill for the side of Ehome. And again, this is what we spoke about before. 
Like one hero gets caught and all the other heroes slowly trickle in, kind of getting baited into a, an awkward fight. And it was the second time this happened to them. They have to be very careful that they don't get stuck up in this save your friend syndrome. But as soon as you realize the situation is bad, you gotta just go back to farm, go back, push the lanes. Because otherwise you're just gonna... How many heroes did they lose? Three? Or four even? Uh, Asteris lost four. Yeah, four. I mean, they did get a couple of return kills as well. It's not like it was super one-sided, but... Spectre wants this to happen, especially with this item build. Unseen energies. So, 1k lead. It's starting to dwindle here for Aster Ares. Yeah. Radiant are scanning. XM now with the... The Yule Scepter can potentially look for some solo kills. TA is also very close to the Desolator. Hook shot mid onto the Lion. Torrent first spike comes through, lands on a three, but it won't save his life. Kunkka's starting to get out of control a little bit. Yeah, we have seen what a big Kunkka can do. Like if you snowball really hard on a Kunkka, the water park is a big problem. Yeah. For the city. Ooh. Which is basically City. Atlantis. Nobody's ever dehydrated. I <laughs> know. <laughs> it is. So wait, does it sink or is it... This is pre-sinkage. This is uh, pre-sinkage. Okay. Yeah. The, the blooming Atlantis. <laughs> See uh, where Poseidon is. He's very close to the Relic on Spectre. But you can see how weak he feels, right? Compared to when you go for Yasha and the Mantis that build up. He would feel a lot more... inclined to fight early on. Because Asta do have a greedy lineup and they... kind of got away with it. Mm -hmm. Now Deso completed on TA. Might be looking for Roshan or it's a big smoke up against Sylar. Level four uh, he's got the X. Can they rotate in time though? Hookshot comes out onto the back lines. Now they use the Eclipse. They got the Terrorize! Is it enough? Is he fine? Vessel, he's broken and he's going to get to the low ground. But Chalice, he's dead to Phoenix somehow, some way. Sylar, he survives. Oh my, that was close. It opens up Roshan though because they needed to use a lot of ults to help him. Yeah, Arena down and Mars dead. They don't have Bedlam, they don't have Terrorize, and Fade, he can throw down a Bramble Maze, but I don't think that's going to help him out all too much. They do have Haunt if they want to make a last-ditch effort to try and stop this Roche or swipe the Aegis, but I just don't think that's what you really want to try to accomplish here. And, uh, yeah, Radiant are going to take the first Roche and Aegis, which is something very doable with a farmed TA like Phoenix. No, yep, 100%. They have a very strong timing now. Spectre is still very weak. Still needs another 1.5k. So she even has the Radiance completed. And even then, she doesn't feel like super strong. You saw, as soon as, as she was broken, she took so much damage from everything. The thing is, though... Sylar, you know, he's... Is this a, de this is a decent Radiance timing, right? Because he's been involved in 9 kills. It's not a terrible Radiance timing, it's just why it fell out of favor is the Knight's nice hookshot away. It's the build-up, it's too slow. Like your Yasha lets you fight very early, it's very cheap components, so if you ever die, it's not as painful. But once the Radiance is online, he's not going BKB on TA, so the Radiance burn and the mischance is going to be inconvenient. But it doesn't give him stats, you know, it doesn't make him more tanky. You gotta rely on RNG to kind of dodge attacks, I guess, which right. can work if you get lucky, but do you wanna rely on that? Probably not. RNG might be the name of the game, though. Yeah, potentially. He's farming up the ancient stack now. Yeah, as I said in the, in the pre-game that we discussed, I thought he was just gonna go blade mail, which makes a lot of sense against the entire draft. If it comes to 
bite them in the butt in the end or not. Does this build double stuff. back for blade mail or could he double back for blade mail? I, nah, I think if you go Radiance, you're just gonna go straight into the Manta after and scale with the Scotty. Like, if he gets Radiance, Manta, Scotty, he will be the strongest hero on the map. But can mm -hmm. he get there? And if he can, can he get there without being at too big of a disadvantage? At least XM is farming up very nicely as well. Closing on to his BKB. Okay, Radiance online. Now it's time. And that could be a big timing. Radiance and then BKB for Razor as well. Yep. But DDTA. He's going to be hitting so damn hard. Do they have a way to purge it? They have a Yule Scepter, but that's it. Hmm. And now you can look at Razor. Why we consider him not to be really a hard counter to TA or anything. Why it goes both ways. He only has 10 armor. If he gets hit by the Melt plus Deso, he's at minus 4. Yeah. The question becomes... Can he survive the TA's onslaught? Can you kill the TA prior to BKB? Slowing potentially down the BKB. It's a lot of questions to answer. TA had Crystallis initially queued up, but he also recognizes against the Radiance you do need that BKB. Because it basically just nullifies it. Ooh, Kunkka might get caught, but Yuna's here to try and help. There's the arena. Acorn shot. Bushwhack does not land. They've got the terrorized. They should have the damage to get the kill here with the haunt coming in. Silar now on a killing spree. Yep. Good usage of the ults. Really, all you need to do is take, like, get a pick up every time you have ults up, and you're naturally going to win this game. If you get to a late game while not being too far behind, this is pretty much an auto win. Like, Spectre this game will be untouched. Right. Yeah, doing a good job. Good damage control, only 2k behind. Xnova getting bled off, but that happens sometimes. Just trying to farm up his blink dagger. XM TP's in. Yeah. Once he has his plate mail, he will be pretty survivable also through the BKB. So that's the next big pickup for him. Chalice going into the Blink Dagger. There's a lot of key items coming out for Ehome soon. And Asta haven't really treasured a whole lot, right? They've been fine just farming. Even though they had that Aegis. They still have that Aegis, but only for another 5 seconds. The thing is, like, yeah, they haven't really pressured too much. But, but is it is it enough being 2k up? That is the thing. I don't think they did pressure enough. Simply because they were not ready to fight at all. They got that Aegis at a really good time. Especially mm -hmm. didn't even have a Relic at the time. And they just didn't want to force a tier 2 tower or anything like that. And now you can just tell they're coming into this mid game again. They're not entirely sure of what they need to do or what they want to do. They're fine just farming uh, the map, which is exactly what Ehome wants. They want to trade farm. Because if you can stay at an even footing, as we said, you're just going to gravitate towards the late game. Naturally, Inspector is going to be king there. You have a Razor as well, who is somewhat of a counter to TA and Luna. And, and ultimately, at the end of the day, that goes hand in nice. hand with what we talked about. With these teams not being able to find proper footing in the mid game, as Chalice does get hit with a hook shot and goes down to Ulu. Yep. He did finish his blink dagger, though. So, not the worst death ever. And it's giving good space to Siler still. X Nova now. His blink dagger online as well. He has so many good haunt combinations now. X Nova can do it. Chalice can do it. Even XM to an extent can do it. Triple BKB timing on Radiant, though. That's a big one. Now this Radiant suddenly feels like it's nothing. Has 
Looks like Ehome might smoke. I mean, they've got a smoke on both supports, so it'll be a smoke as three. Obviously, you've got the haunt to join the fight. Yes. Radiance top tower is under attack. But they're not over there, and Master Ares, they've smoked up themselves towards mid. But they have no stuns. So breaks kind of trap down, it. hook shot comes in and hits on X Nova. And they will get a quick kill onto the lion. The question is, do they get more? Fuels up into the uh, air and it'll just yeah. be one. Yeah. And unfortunately, only the plus five. Radiance Luna has family ancients alone. Be a little careful. <laughs> if Eom just randomly walked it, he would have been dead. Especially on the yeah dire side of the map. It is a risky place to farm. He's still doing it. It should not be allowed while he's getting away with murder here. Like, even Silas is like, what the hell? Should I be scared? Are they here? <laughs> is he a backup? He's now. Time to run, Siler. But it's not the right way. Long row, three spawn, two and a half minutes. Yep, Sider closing in onto his radiance very, very shortly. Uh, sorry, uh, Manta style. Let's see, they're gonna go in on this. They've got the hook shot, the finger comes out. Sammy's cat, ooh, big damage coming through. Chalice and Xnomer are gonna be out of the fight with the BKB be popped by the Razor with a go after Sammy's cat. They just don't have the damage just yet. Spectral Dagger, right click in, XM gets one, but it's a two for one. That is certainly not what they were looking for. It just got blown up immediately. What happened yeah. there? Was it a big side blade or what? It the support was looks so like, yeah, it was a big side blade, but also the damage coming in from this hoodwink was pretty massive. Second highest damage dealer in the fight. Obviously, Luna not involved, not outputting anything, but... That is really not the fight you want for Ehome when both your Mars and your Lion die immediately. Yeah, that's super important. But this is what we said about these BKBs. They have no answer to them. Fate is spotted out by the rocket. Terrorize. Okay. Well, didn't lead too much, but they wanted to do a mass uh, terrorize combo. Look shot. Targeted. Bushwhack and the damage again immediately. X Nova killed off and they've got the eclipse down with the melon strike. The damage is there. XM the won't as well. be able to survive and now Dark Will looking like, well, oh, that's going to be a plus one for sure. Lucent Beam and the Rocket Flare. They get the kill on a fate. Yeah, making it look easy. Roshan respawning in 40 seconds. They will be ready for that fight at least, but Eom is bleeding away so many kills all around the map. They must be feeling very confident on the Aster side. This is not where Ehom thought they would be, and this is the second game in a row where Aster Ares have Elite coming into about the same point in the game. Yeah, but this time, maybe even a bit of a bigger lead than they had previously. Roshan will respawn, they will see it right away. Are they gonna pull the trigger is the question. Because this Rosh fight could be do or die for them. If they lose this fight, Ehome will be in a big, big lead. But it is falling very fast. And Ehome is already delayed. No chance in getting here. And the shot goes to the Kunkka. He almost has his Agathon Scepter as well. It's gonna be hard team fights uh, from there on on. Yeah, I maybe would have liked to see the uh, shard on the TA. I'm a big fan of that shard. I think it's S tier. I think Kunkka shard is S tier as well. Really good. It's sort of a uh, disarm as well, because you can't hit through it. That's certainly an odd spell. 
one that you kind of have to be proficient at using. Yeah, it can definitely backfire if you use it wrongly. Link Spear. Spear coming through Static Link as well as the Arena right on the Phoenix. Do they have what it takes to get the kills here? Terrorize on the three! Maybe they do! They've got the Hulk coming in from Sour. They're going to go after this Hoodwink. Maybe they have the damage to get the kill on the Phoenix with the BKB being popped here by the Gun Gun. Torrent doesn't land damage on the XM. He's going to use himself into the air. They've got the Eclipse coming down. They'll get the kill on the XM. They'll take out Yuna and Tybee's Cat. Now they'll buy back on this Clockwork. They have a buyback available out onto this Razor, but they got the kill on the Sour. So taking out the Spectre might be more than admission more than the price of admission that Ehome want to spend in this fight if he were to buy back. Yeah. It was a very good initiation by Ehome, but they overstayed a little bit. The Aegis respawn was just too much to handle. The BKBs were used to kill off the Aegis. So the Eclipse just shredded them on top of all the Kunkka spells as well. It certainly oh. shows that they have the ability yeah, to clear out these heroes. Given yeah. the right opportunity. But now it's high ground time. They do have Glyph available. Terrorize is up. And Mars ult is up in five. They can catch the TA again. Maybe they have a chance. Oh my god, look at the damage coming on Fade. Oh my god. Fade, Yuna. Oh, that sharpshooter hit. Very early buyback, also from Fade. And they want to keep knocking on the high ground. They are staying. Ooh, pull back into the fight. It was just a random bushwhack as well, by the way. He did not see that, uh, Dark Willow. The Terror Eyes the Luna. Blink, as well as the Spear that's coming out under the Luna. They've got the figure. Do they have the damage? They've got him up in the air with the Earth Spike. They'll get the kill on to Ulu. They lose Fade. BKB's been popped by Phoenix. They're going to look for the chase. Chalice hit by that trap. He's got Yule's Spectral Dagger out from Silar. Bushwhack Torrent. Maybe the it's damage of the hook shot. Oh, Sharpshooter doesn't land. Torrent Storm bouncing these heroes up into the air. They've got this with a Spear Vessel. Tidal Wave coming in on Silar. They get the kill on X Nova. And now they've got the X. They don't even need to pull him back. Silar dead to Phoenix. And Aster Ares, they may have just locked up game number two here. Very, very possible. Saladine there again is a big blow to him. He, he's even itemizing into BKB next. Because he feels there's way too much overwhelming magic damage. But what can you really do at this point? You're 15k behind. You might not lose a second sight now. But it feels inevitable at this point. Hook shot, hook shot in deep on the chalice. He's been on it. They're going to buy back onto the Spectre. They'll use that haunt. They've got XM moving forward. There's the tidal wave that pushes them away. They also get the ghost ship that lands. Try to TP out Yuna, but he gets hit by the Earth Spike. They've got the Hex onto the Kunkka. This is well played right now by Ehome as they'll get not two, but three. And they will take out this Kunkka. Ooh, Courier. He wants a gem. Trying to catch a gem, but it's also holding a shard and a tome. It was a lot of money on the Courier, yeah. But he's only support, so won't be dead for too long. Just two minutes. Or is it just? You know, if your core is dead for like four. And it cost the Sylar buyback, though. It was a couple of good kills. They needed that. And Sylar is getting very close to his BKB. All of a sudden, you've got a win condition. Not that you didn't really have one before, but Sylar did buy back. Yeah, and Razor. Finishes uh, Shiva's Gato. The next fight with the BKB on Sila is going to be potentially the last one that Eom has in them. If they lose that fight, the game might just be over. If they win that fight, however, they are back in the game, maybe even ahead in the game, because as we said, late game is definitely on the side of Ehome. But this Kanka is causing so many problems. Could very well be dependent on when that fight happens how it happens and if Ehome can find themselves getting Roche soon afterwards, but we'll have to see. Xnova disconnecting as he pauses for a quick second. Yep. We talked no, about last game lead. as well. And the game before that too. There's not a lot of saving supports being picked lately. In the Chinese region at least, so a lion hacks into a spear could just kill any of the cores from the Radiant side. And vice versa, a hookshot 
could lead to the same fate for some of the dire heroes too. Feels like uh, bushwhack into an acorn shot sh sharpshooter is enough to get a kill. Yeah. Hoodwing deals so much damage. He's not even level 18 yet. And if he somehow reaches level 25, that becomes even more ridiculous. Because suddenly he pierces magic immunity and deals pure damage. 1400 pure damage. Pretty insane. Or 1250, I guess. But tune down a little bit. But more than enough on a 45 seconds cooldown, basically. Right. Woodwing is a strong hero. A little on the pick, perhaps. Alright, Sadak got his BKB. Horned up in 30. BKB now also finished on Chalice. They got a lot of really good uh, timings coming out. Can they convert Questions. that into a good team fight? Yep. Can you not read my mind? Sorry, man. Because I was going to say convert. Like, that was the exact word I was going to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been working together for a while. I guess someone would say too long. Not me, though. I wouldn't say that. Really? I wouldn't. I want to keep working with you. Oh, thank you. I love you this too. is where the chat goes. Oh, thanks, chat. This Appreciate where a lot it. Of hard shapes coming to chat. Maybe some cringes. Ah. Cringes in your heart. Oh, that was a Luna in a bad Miss, spot, Miss. but they Uru know crazy. where Luna is running. Yeah, he is a crazy guy. If he gets hexed, there, he's just dead. Yeah. He goes from Uwu to Uwu. He goes from Uwu to XW. <laughs> he goes from Uwu to Lul. Uwu <laughs> oh, Yeah. Uwu Roche potentially up in 60 seconds. Scotty is two ulti orbs in gold away for the Spectre, so 4,100 gold. gold. What does TA have? It's going to the Scotty also. Luna going to the Daedalus. Just pure damage on his side. Another smoke popped. This is kind of running from the bottom to the map to the top. From the bottom to the top. To the bottom to the top. Uh huh. Yeah, now that this time they went from top to bottom because I, they, I'm pretty sure, spotted them with that rocket flare. Now they've got the X on a Siamese cat. Smoke on the high ground. Let's they're throwing the sides of one E home. They're going back and forth. Yeah, they're a little nervous. X Nova with the gem. If he jumps in, he is probably going to die. Phoenix no longer has that double damage. Taking out some obs there, doing that clockwork 240 gold. Oh, they're looking at the razor. He's on the run. <laughs> he should be on the run. Inspector is tipping back. Hook shot missing. BKB early from Ulu. Uh oh. But also early from XM. Pawn for both of them. Yeah. Roche now back up. Aegis, cheese, refresh shard. Man, we have not seen Nag's blessing on any of these third Roches. Yeah, maybe they shadow removed that. They only spawn on the floor. Not 50 50. Not true 50 50. Yeah, more like 9 10. Sharpshooter. Oh, in, Sharpshooter. That's going to come through there. You used the haunt. They've got the tower. Oh, oh, no. The fear is in. Phoenix has gone. Immediate buyback. And I just say killing Silar is a weak condition for the side of Esther Ares. Maybe they can do it with the hookshot coming up from Siamese Cat. They've got the pushback with the Eclipse coming through. Oh, no. Silar gone. Two minutes dead. Turret Storm. Everything coming in. And there was no way for him to get out. Tidal wave pushing. Ooh, Dark Will away. Potentially to a TP out. Yeah, sure. 
but that's going to be Aegis Cheese Refresher Shard into the hands of Aster Ares unless Eho make a desperation play and they don't have buyback on this Mars for 200 gold so he's not going to be the one blinking in nor does he have the time to do so yeah Sila overstepping his luck there a little bit he pushed it way too far like you gotta get that kill and get out because as we said you don't have buyback you're dead for 80 buyback still on cooldown for 90 seconds that's at least a second rex probably can they mount a miracle defense without him i don't think so right every fresh add on <laughs> on razor double eye of the storm can that maybe maybe defend if they've got the proper initiation coming in from chalice the buybacks are mars dark will and lion the only one who doesn't have it who's alive is xm because he's short 1500 gold but get a couple of kills maybe you're there you have to do this properly b cop phoenix has to be the one hitting the high ground luna cannot be caught. Cat. look at where he's at i look at the d boards as well the gem though yeah, they'll spot it. So they're going to have an inkling of a feeling that, hey, maybe Clockwork got in around us. Yeah. And I'm just going to give up the side. Yeah. Good decision. You still have a tier but two now so they can't he's bouncing us. him off this building to go for the tier fours. That won't last too long, but they've got the silence with the shard that's on they Phoenix. Oh, they look at the hex. The Luna's got the fire. Oh, he's gone. Hookshot comes out of the line, but is it going to be enough for the Behemoth? He's being popped here by Kunkka, by this Phoenix TA, and it's just not enough yet. Looking over at XM, who's pushed down to the low ground. They've got the Aegis, so they have a second life on the TA. They hit the Sharpshooter. They're going to break XM. They've got themselves the Spear. They're going to kill on a Siamese Cat, but XM trying to run the Torrent Lens. They've got themselves the Spear that's on him, and XM's dead, but here comes Sylar. He's got the Haunt. Spectral Dagger on a Yuna won't be enough, but they got the kill on a Luna, which is technically again a hold we said luna has to be careful with his positioning he cannot be the ones hitting the building he does Exnova capitalizes instantly and he gets blown up they do get a lot of exit kills luckily like if they don't get that razor there it's a full-blown loss for them uh, aries has to be careful here the, the specter is getting really strong once that scotty is up it's gonna be a little scary and now you're dealing with no Aegis, so it's a little bit more scary at the fact that TA does not have buyback for five minutes. Yep, and your Spectre now does have buyback. Double damage, as is tradition in these tense moments. Yeah. Did you see how much work XM did with the Refresher Orb? He double linked the TA. He couldn't play the fight at all. Ooh, spell, prism. spell prism penta edge sword going at two opposite teams spell prism X for that razor a spike it was a bigger spike on both the luna as well as the ta that opened up that fight for ehome and now they'll have xm back up in five yeah this is the scary part about lion if you have no save on your team you get hexed you are going to die no matter what luna had a cheese in her inventory for like the last three times she died but you just can't use it. Got a trickster cloak now, which I think should not be in the game. Very strong item. Instant but we'll see if we can actually save her. At least Luna needs a lot of damage, and so does TA. But the survivability, it's not quite it's up not there. It's not there sometimes. Yeah. TA is pretty survivable with the 14. Uh, refraction charges but they do have ways of getting through that razor level 25 is going to be a big one as well you know, additional one eye of the storm targets to get with an axe that's three per shot Ooh, yeah which is a lot that can be very dangerous yeah you don't really have to damage anymore to burst him down before he bkbs Then if you get to double link off on your Luna and TA, turn into a really bad fight real quick. 25 Spectre now. Man. Timeless Relic. Yeah, and this is the point in the game where we always say the net worth doesn't really matter a whole lot anymore. Sure, they're still ahead, but they are really strong now on the dire side as well. Yeah. 
And the thing is, like, there's win conditions for both teams. Problem for, I would say, Aster Aries at this point is in 470 gold for XM, everybody will have buyback for Ehome. Yeah. Most important is Spectre, though. He can run in, potentially die first, and then buy back Haunt. Oh, yeah, Spectre really, I like to get that ISKD, but... Mm -hmm. After the Skadi, what's Chalice. next for him? Oh, they're smoking around. The big wraparound. I have it. They've got themselves a the jetpack. There's the hookshot coming in out on tax. No, but the force they found on the low ground is going to keep him on. They've got the curse crown. That does hit. Stop the shooter. shooter. He really is a sharpshooter. That came from downtown. They're going to get the kill on a Siamese cap potentially, and they'll at least get the one for one trade. But the buybacks come out from both supports with the BKB being popped by Chalice. They've got the arena down to the spear landing onto the Gunga, who's trying to run. Can he get a torrent out? It's a tidal wave that comes out with the refresher being popped by Terrorize, it lands onto the Kunkka, they use the Eclipse, is it going to be enough damage? He'll eat the cheese onto those Pluna, but he's still running the damage from XM, is just all too much. He's got 416 extra damage, and it's still not enough for him to survive. They get the kill to XM, he's got buyback, they fought back on the Luna as well as the Kunkka, and now Aster Ares will turn it around with a Metal Strike that hits X Nova, who already bought back in this fight. Oh my, it was a quick back and forth. It's a 4k lead for Aster Ares. You need to see how much damage that Fade Razor was pumping out. Oh, Fade getting caught. He's at least got buyback still. Phoenix makes the run and gets the kill. It's a lot of buybacks needlessly committed, I feel like, by Aster. And now they're probably feeling like they got to do something with this. Want to get Mega Creeps? Can they? No refresher up for Razor yet. They gotta defend his last piece of wreck somehow. Maybe Spectre needs to expand her buyback for it. We gotta fight this back. They have Glyph. Glyph is confident in fighting this. Oh, Siler. Bramble Maze, Radiance, X. It might set up Siler. He needs to be careful. He's using that Stormcrafter. Does have buyback. buyback. He did pick up that Scotty. Yeah, and still has buyback. If they lose Luna now, or Kanka is going to be massive. You know, looking for a hook shot, or, well, ooh, Siamese Cow looking for a hook shot. It was a bushwhack that they were looking for with the BKB being popped by Sylar, as well as Chalice, but Chalice, he's not making a move in. XM, yes. he's moving forward, though. They've got themselves the arena that's going to come down only out of the hoodwink. Chalice, he's got the control that gets the kill onto Yuna. They also killed off Phoenix, but both of them do have buyback. The buyback committed by XM, the refresher orb on Mars actually for double arena, double spear. <laughs> There's so many refresher orbs this game. Kanka should Hard to be keep track of one what spells well. are used. Yeah. And Luna feels so weak suddenly, don't you think? Like, every fight she's just running from this razor. She's doing too much. The refresher orb. He's getting a blink dagger. Okay. I can't believe going to the overwhelming this blink. Is this the latest tier one mid that's ever been standing? I don't know about ever, but certainly one of the longest. And this is kind of the point that we spoke about earlier. Spectre now feels a little bit unkillable with a 4k health pool, BKB, Scotty up, uh, the pickup. What's next for him? He has 6k gold. He is filthy rich suddenly. Dark Willow. Terrorized duration plus a second and a half at 25, obviously three levels away from it, but. Yeah, but look at Razor. Think long term. Razor's 25 now. It's double after storm targets. He did not go for Ags. He's actually working towards overwhelming Blink, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, just to be able to stay on top of them, get a little bit more tanky. Sila is going into the Abyssal Blade. Picked up his Basher. Once that's up, the TA can't really fight him anymore. At all. And this is the tipping point that we've been speaking about. It's gonna be so hard for this Radiant side to fight now. To the Refresher Mars, Refresher Razor. Potentially even Refresher Spectre if there's a Refresher shot on the next Roche. And there is. It's gonna be Roche number four. So it's oh, it the fourth one already? Refresher Shard, Ag's Blessing. Yeah. Oh, it's the fourth one already. Damn. Or do you just want to give it to the Razor and give him triple eye of the storm and triple link? 
why not i mean he had what 416 damage from the previous refresher and he's linked literally for so long and if he gets that overwhelming blink uh, how do you run don't run they're all building into hurricane pikes but is it enough it didn't... he's so fast on the razor now he has a blink tag on top of that Word spotting Silar, Spectral Dagger thrown over onto Yuna, Phoenix frontlining. Not sure if he really wants to be in that exact spot. With them maybe looking to make a move, Chalice links in. Now he's hit with the Axe as well as the Torrent. Silar, he's using that Spectral Dagger to get away. The Hookshot misses, but the Sharpshooter doesn't. Yeah, Hookshot missed on a stationary target. Thanks. Trying to bait out at least some BKBs. This game is very tense now with the Roshan up. For sure. And that gem pain off the lion. It's a lot of gold from these wards that they're dewarding. Yuna coming through. Acorn shot. Bushwhack. Oren. Sylar has to be careful about how he approaches this. He's taking quite a bit of damage. Double bash. No, he doesn't feel comfortable doing this 100%. Hook shot is available again. And this is... Worth Roche, so Aegis Cheese, Refresher Shard, Ag's Blessing. This is the good part of this game for Aster. They got two sides, so the side lanes are always going to be pushing into E home. So Roche is a little bit easier for them. You've got the waves pushing in, but you've also got the lack of buybacks. What? Chalice went for the five head play. He went for the 180 HP region with the refresher orb. The it's going to be massive. Like they're going to heal like 2k health in that arena. It's Could actually the pretty Venn underappreciated diagram. talent, I think. 180 HP per second is not little. There's like healing ward level of uh, health gain right there. My Luna TP bottom. Push out the lane. Wants to put the pressure on. Motion. Yeah. Jealous? You gotta be is, careful. Is this the proper key? I mean, the problem is they are playing against Spectre, so he can just TP down there, push that out, and haunt to the fight. They've got the arena down. Spear comes through, and they are going to use that haunt. Yuna looking dead to rights and has buyback. So that's only one for the haunt as well as the arena. But they do have a lot of refreshers on this team. The X, no. Stormcrafters, Silar avoiding the pullback. Torin Storm gets used. So that's going to be on cooldown for another 54 seconds. The hookshot all the way deep coming through onto this Dark Willow. But here comes the Mars. He's stunned off. He may not be able to get the arena off. The tidal wave, the ghost ship, the BKB comes up from Chalice. And he's going to be dead. But they get the kill on a Phoenix. They're going to buy back on Chalice as well as Phoenix. They'll get the kill on Azire. He's going to buy back as well. So buybacks around the horn. Nobody's got buybacks left. So now it's do or die as they get the kill on the Siamese cat. He's dead for 93 seconds. He doesn't have buyback. And Roche is sitting here wondering who will slay him as he's down to half health. Without a clock, it's very hard to actually initiate for them into this Roche pit. Yuna has to be careful too. He bought back for this fight. He gets caught out. He's going there for two minutes. Almost taking the tier four top. Razor is pushing out lanes. He's not there at Roshan right now. They're still hitting it. Such a tense moment. sylar has got a Bissell Blade. Charging up the shot shooter. shooter. Looking for the combination. Chalice. He's in trouble with the terrorize. He's going to be enough to get the kill on the Chalice. They're going to use the Jordan Storm. They'll go for the damage onto this lion. But Uwu, he's gone. Just gets my back back. It's just back up. That's massive for them. They Push the back. They got the Torrent. Roche is down. Silar snatches the Aegis. And so he's going to eat the cheese. He's trying to survive. He goes up into the air with that Yules with the BKB. Now, Eye of the Storm doing the damage onto the Kunkka. They get the kill onto the Kunkka, but he's got my back too. He's got the Phoenix. And now the TA hit with the finger, Sylar gets the kill, and that is Phoenix dead for two minutes. But look at your base. The tier fours are falling. Fate's trying to defend. These creeps are coming in and making it very dangerous for e -home. Ooh, that was a long, long fight for all these tier four towers to fall. Two creeps. It's still a big win for e -home. They're now Ag's blessing picked up by fall. Aster Ares. That's dropped in the base. Oh, the Axe Blessing. Who's going to get that? 
I want to give it to the TA? No. The Hoodwink took it. Okay. For the additional spell damage, I like it quite a bit. But now that it's no buybacks for Ooh, anyone at this point, right? Only Dark Willow has it. Everybody around the horn, but XM will have his in 14 seconds. Clockwork short, 115 gold. Yeah. And look who got the refresher shot. It is on the razor. It's going to be a triple eye of the storm. Triple He's doing so blink. much damage already with two. And he wants that overwhelming blink. But his buyback only gives him 2,700 surplus, which is enough for the Reaver. Yeah, still a little bit away from it. Now Spectre, you killed him once. But can you kill him twice? Yeah, this time he's got the Aegis to work with. He did use that buyback earlier. And now Hookshot, they're looking for it. They're looking for the Sharpshooter, but they're going to go to the Haunt. And now going in behind this Luna. They got the kill on the X over. He's going to be dead for 100 seconds. They're trying to get the Terrorized. That going to hit onto Ulu. But now they've got the stone with the Bushwhack. Sylar stuck in the air. They're going to move forward. No the buyback. And Yule's out, out of the Luna. Luna's in trouble all by himself with the Mangler right on top. They get the kill on Ulu. And they will take out the Luna for two minutes. Fighting that fight without Phoenix, a.k.a. the TA. He's a hero name. He's a team name. And he's also a player name. Phoenix stayed for eight more seconds, and now they have to hold without Luna for two minutes. Yep, and refresh a shot, or Orb rather picked up on Spectre now as well. They got too hungry. They saw the lion, but you got a Spectre with Haunt against you. You can't make these moves without considering that. And Luna ends up paying the price. How do they defend without the Luna? Silence hookshot coming through on a chalice. Now they've got the bushwhack to follow it up. They're charging up the sharpshooter. So much damage coming into the chalice from just that sharpshooter. He's going to pop the refresher. He's going to step into the arena. He's got that extra regen. And look at him just get the health back on the back line. So they'll look over the clockwork. XM coming in. And now he'll move forward. Siamese cat in trouble. And they should have this clockwork dead to rights. But he goes to the jetpack. No way, Siamese cat. No way. It does have buyback on him, though. A lot of good time for the Luna. Top lane is pushing in too. They have to be careful, Ehome has. They've got the tour in that lands on a Silar again with the Stormcrafter, but the silence comes out from the trap from this T8. Oh, Tidal pulling Wave pulling him in, pops the Manta. It's just illusions. It's Chalice blinks into enemy lines, and now he's going to be hit with the hook shot. But they've got the Terrorize coming down on the clockwork. He's up in the air on the jetpack. Yes. Chalice trying to regen his health inside the arena for the Sharpshooter. He's just too accurate. They get the kill here on the Mars. He's going to be dead for 96 seconds, and now Silar might be thinking about getting out. But the Bushwhack, it's there on a Silar. He's level 29. He's got so many talents. He's got so much health. He's got so much damage. But he's not even gonna be enough. X -mark. Oh, spectral dagger, I don't think so. X marks the spot, meld strike. He's got a second life, but Ehome, I think they're helpless in trying to get him out. He's got the second life. They're gonna try and line up the torrent, but the BKB comes through. So Silar, spectral dagger, hook shot again from Siamese Cat. They've got the lockdown. He goes to the mantle of the plasma field on a Siamese Cat with a jetpack trying to run. And now, rocket flare out. Silar has made his escape, but he's one life shorter, and now it is all on the line without buybacks. <laughs> this game is insane. I can't believe Eon... <laughs> We're five minutes away from tier fives. The Hoodwing keeps catching out so many prime targets. Like, the he damage is on a chalice with sharpshooter is disgusting. Yeah, it is now how much? 1250 pure damage. Every time. Oh, and that is what half of Chalice's, uh, Chalice's health pool. He now has an A on this that he didn't have previously. But he has to be really careful. He's one of the prime targets for this Radiant lineup. He needs to live. You can, yeah, and you can see how much that arena is doing in terms of the regen that's keeping him potentially alive. The fact that it's so close, the fact that he can even think about surviving by just stepping into the arena is actually crazy. Hookshot coming through, but he's in the Shadow Realm. Now they're going to go to the Haunt. They'll go to the back lines with XM. Pop the Refresher Charm immediately. They'll go in with the BKB. The Terrorize gets out of the Kunkka. Maybe want to change directions here as they've got the arena as well as the Spear. So that's going to be the HV region. They'll get the kill of the Kunkka and they look over for more. That's two minutes without the Kunkka. Unipop and the BKB and trying to run on his own. 
wink. Oh, Yuna, he's dead. Double kill for XM. Jetpack trying to run, but it's not going to be far enough as X Nova lands the Earth Spike. Triple kill for XM. And now three heroes with no buyback. Gained for two minutes. Right on the hot Luna, bash. by the way, getting chased. There's the bashes. Ooh, ooh, oh no. See you later, maybe. Damn Eclipse it. coming down, but it's not going to be enough damage. They've got themselves the Bramble Maze around on Ooh with the BKB. Chalice moving in. Yule's up into the air. Chalice has the control. Chalice has the spear. And they have the kill well. that will take out Uwu. This is looking like all she wrote here for Astro Ares is the finger hits on a Phoenix. And Yuna will call GG for Astro Ares. Ooh, they're making a sweat here. e -home was not in control of this game for the longest time. XM, like, his razor is just absolutely 